may wonder why we select that in 16, but um, this year Lily had moved that up to help um, students be able to better prepare for that. Um, she had quite a bit of competition. She too. did. She did. That's always a, a really impressive group of students that apply for that um, scholarship. So congratulations to Emma and, and all the students that were finalists and applied for that. Um, and then something else, again, as heard on WROI, Giving Tuesday. Um, this is the second year that the foundation has done that, thanks to WROI and all of our partners that, that helped with that day. Um, we held that on November 29th. Um, during the event, we raised a little over $74,000 for um, various funds within the foundation. Um, part of that was um, we had a dollar-for-dollar dollar match to gifts to community funds. Um, we allocated $25,000 for that and actually met that match by about noon, Excellent. which was pretty amazing. Excellent. Um, raised over $50,000 in new gifts to community funds. So um, thank you to everybody who participated in that. Um, thank you to all our donors who have made that um, event successful. And um, we're looking forward to the grants. Again, those go out in community grants in the future, and that helps us make even even more grants. Um, Another back to scholarships a little bit. Our scholarship application is available um, online. Um, you can go to nicf.org, our website, and um, check out the scholarship links. Um, we have the application. Again, the process is completely online, so students will um, go in, check out the scholarships, and then um, fill out their application. And, and the neat thing about it being online is they don't have to go in and fill out an individual application for every scholarship. They just fill out um, basic information, okay. and then there's some specific details for each of the scholarships that they may be interested in applying for. Um, so I'd encourage students to check that out. Um, of course, today is the first day of, of break for most students, so you have some time. Um, but the deadline for those applications is March 3rd, um, so you have about three months to look at that, but I'd encourage students to take a look at that. Um, we have about 47 different scholarships, um, so they really vary anywhere from, of course, nursing and agriculture are, are a big part of our community, but um, different activities, different schools. Um, I venture to say there's probably something that would apply to about anyone who's planning to continue their education. So I'd encourage students to check that out. Again, nicf.org and click on the links to the scholarship okay. um, pages there. So what we have with us today, um, Evan Gottschalk. Um, Evan has been the president of the Fulton County Community Foundation um, for this year. So I want to start off by welcoming you, Evan, and saying thanks for being here. Hey, you're welcome, Brian. Thanks for having me. And, and what we wanted to do today was kind of talk a little bit about, go through the year in review. We okay. had some pretty big changes, did some pretty big things throughout the year. Um, the first thing that I wanted to start off by mentioning is that um, if people haven't seen it and they're interested, we do have a, a year in review video that we've posted to our website and Facebook. So um, if you want to see some of the things that the foundation has done throughout the year, um, see some familiar faces, you can go to our website, nicf.org, and click on the Fulton County News page, and you'll see a link to that, or on our Facebook um, under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Excellent. Had a lot of compliments about that video. We did, and, and we'll see some familiar faces, including including yours, Evan, on that. Um, and so we're just going to kind of go through some of the highlights of the year. Of course, what we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that event, Valentine's Day. <laughs> of course, that's coming up. Plans are in yeah, the works, so stay tuned for off, details. Um, that's, that's a sink or swim event. It is. 2016 <laughs> was actually the 18th annual event for that. Wow. And so that's become, a, I think, a community staple. So um, look forward to details coming out about that soon. But, um, but then another big thing that actually was completed during um, the first part of 2016 was the Lily Gift 6 um, matching program that Lily offered. So, um, Evan, I guess I'd ask you to talk a little bit about um, that and the success of that program. Well, in Fulton County, we each county was able to kind of craft their uh, matching strategy from the Lily Endowment um, organization, and we elected to um, go for 500000 in new community funds, um, which would earn a match of 500000 And we had 18 months to accomplish that um it was it seemed aggressive uh 
but we felt also some confidence in our group. We've got a very uh, experienced um, board, and of course, Brian, you, you and the NICF staff um, do such a great job. So we were very confident, um, and we did reach that full uh, goal of raising 500000 in community funds um, by the deadline, which was the, earlier in March. <clears throat> and uh, just a huge success for our community. The community funds that we targeted uh, go into a pool, and the earnings from those funds then are put into our granting program that we can use for a variety of different things. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that soon, um, some of the grants for this year. But also we use those funds for other uh, things that we want to support in the community throughout the year. So raising uh, really a million dollars um, towards that that pool of funds is going to make uh, just an enormous impact for Fulton County um, starting now, but also even more so in the future. So, you know, really fun to look at the long-term effects of something like that. And the community did such a wonderful, generous job of coming together and supporting um, kind of that matching opportunity from Lilly Endowment. So... Well, and, and leading into that, um, talk a little bit about this year where we had a big decision and the fact that we changed our granting process so there were no deadlines. Yeah, we, we'd kind of, um, we'd heard of a couple other counties doing something like this. It wasn't real widespread, so we were curious about it as a grants committee. And uh, Jeff Finke led that up this year um, with support from Kren Becknell Lucas um, from the NICF. And really the idea it was, hey, you know, there's needs throughout the year from these charitable organizations that we work with. So maybe we could be a little bit more open to acting um, on grant requests um, throughout the year rather than all at once kind of towards the end of the year once we'd collected all the applications. So kind of how that worked is we would accept, uh, we have been accepting applications any time that an organization has a need and then that committee will get together every month or two and review those and uh, make some decisions right then. And then those grants get funded um, as needed. So I know that that's been a really big success this year. Um, talking to Jeff, they had a lot of applications as a committee, um, and they were able to fund throughout the year several different times to organizations. I, I believe uh, they gave were able to grant uh, or um, grant or provide support for it, like nearly two hundred thousand yeah. dollars to Fulton County. Excellent for yeah. this year. And the fun thing about the foundation is that that's just going to keep getting bigger. The yeah. impact, um, even if you know other donors don't come forward in the future, that that money invested grows and provides more um, more dollars for grants. So, yeah. and I think that's part of the value of talking about the matching campaign that having those dollars available so that we could have more grants available and be able to be more flexible on what we do with with our funds yep it definitely helps um you know that those community funds were started over 20 years ago so there's a nice pool of of money available each year we're going to be talking about that as a, a northern indiana community foundation here in uh, early in the spring to determine uh, the percentage that we're able to grant out. Um, but that, that's that been going on. Those funds have been growing uh, through investments for over 20 years. And then now we've got some, um, some new additions to that through that matching program. So really fun how that all works together and then how it ends up affecting our local charitable organizations and then our citizens. And the neat thing about that is those dollars are captured here for Fulton County. So we look at this million dollars that was raised during the Lilly matching campaign and, and look at that and say that's an additional $40,000 that we can grant out every year specifically for Fulton County projects. It's really neat to see how that how that has happened. And I would say, you know, even thinking about the number 40000 very large number when you look at the uh, larger grants that exactly. we've ever given yeah. out. So a uh, very big dollar amount um, really enables us to meet more local needs, uh, which in turn makes our donors happy because uh, they're the ones who we're trying to fulfill their wishes by by meeting these needs. And so as they see those things happen and our ability to do more and more, it just creates a, just that really tight relationship with our donors and uh, a lot of goodwill in the community. And then, and then talking about one of the projects we've been able to support, of course, the preschool project was something that the foundation kind of spearheaded um, a few years ago. Um, this is the fourth year that we've been able to provide 
scholarships for that. And this year, um, for the 2016-17 school year, right now we have 27 children that are benefiting from that program countywide. Um, so Who probably otherwise might not be able to be in there, A lot of them wouldn't be able to, and that's it's been wonderful to see that right. and get help students get their education off on the right foot um, early and benefit from that. So um, it's wonderful to be able to support projects like that and make an impact on those young lives that in the future we're going to see those um, students be part of our workforce and part of the citizens of our community and and hopefully benefiting them throughout their lives. Yeah. And what I also like about that preschool project is just it's a great example of a need being recognized that maybe wasn't something 20 years ago that we really realized was something we should be looking at. But with the flexibility of these grant dollars, we can start meeting that need now as something comes up. And the preschool project is just a great example of that, um, having some flexible funds to meet a, a current yeah. need, not something that maybe was even thought of a long time ago. Yeah. And then um, talking about scholarships, I'm just kind of looking throughout the year. As okay. I mentioned, the applications, um, including the, the Lilly um, Endowment Scholarships, this year the foundation has been able to award just over $196,000 in scholarships wow. to area students and um we ha we're also able to expand some of our scholarships, have some for what we consider non-traditional students, maybe people in our community that are working, that need additional training, or even at graduate levels. Um, we have scholarships that help benefit there, so it's, it's wonderful when we see that um, number. Of course, the cost of education isn't getting any cheaper, and these scholarships help make that education um, more affordable for people students that are graduating people that are living and working in our community it's wonderful to be able to support that um, and you hear about nationally you know kind of a student debt right exactly, issue exactly. Uh, going on so this yeah. is one uh, real easy way for a community to kind of rally around and say well for our local students you know we're gonna we're gonna kick in some money each year and provide a little bit easier path for them so they don't get in that same hole that right. some other kids are getting into just because of that rising cost yeah. And another thing that was interesting this year, um, the Community Foundation has um, been successful in um, receiving our certification for national standards. Um, the Council on Foundations is a national organization that looks over charities and foundations and, and has a process to review, making sure that organizations are working with best practices. Um, and that's something that it's... I'm sure you're probably excited when your auditors come in at the bank and look over <laughs> things like that. Um, national standards is a lot of things about how we operate as a foundation, but it really is beneficial for us to sit down and look at, are we doing this the most right. efficient way? Making sure that, as Evan said, donors' wishes are fulfilled and that we're, we're being most efficient with those gifts that are given to us. And, and by completing that, it's, it really gives us the the encouragement that yes we are doing things the best way that we can and, and it's been good to be able to complete sure. that process and and verify from an outside organization that us as a foundation are operating the way that we should be well it also uh, also helps with community trust too it in does terms it of does dollars that, yes to the foundation yes and that's yeah. a big part of right. it we want people to feel comfortable that their gifts are being used the way that they want them right. to and and efficiently so yeah, a lot, it comes back to confidence and kind of thinking back at the little bank jab you had there. But, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we look at it at, in the banking world as, hey, this is our partner and they're helping yeah. us be as strong as we sure. need to be. So and yeah. it's the same exact thing at the foundation. And it is a lot of work um, and you, you answer a lot of questions because really to get down to the, the meat of it, there is a lot of investigation and communication that needs to happen. So going through this as at the foundation, um, such a, a big deal, um, allows us to tighten things up um, as needed and uh, really came through it well. Um, and then the things that, um, you know, they always have some some modern ideas for policy changes, which is great. That's exactly when when you're kind of in it day to day. Those are the things that don't jump out to you sometimes. So really good refining process that we went through and a lot of extra work by the staff that did a great job getting all that accomplished throughout the year with all the other things that we've been doing. 
Well, the last thing I wanted to talk with you about today, Evan, is is maybe give us your perspective. You're a board member. You've been involved for a number of years. Um, talk to us from your your personal perspective as far as what's the value of the foundation and maybe some of the things that you've come to learn about our community by being a part of our organization. Well, I think first and foremost, um, you know, I didn't really know much about foundation when you approached me seven years ago or however long that was. Um, you hear the term foundation, you automatically think of some national organizations um, that maybe have been in the news uh, that, you know, help things, but you don't know exactly where the money comes from, how it got there, or how the decisions are made. Um, what I, you know, kind of the value of our foundation uh, that jumped out to me after getting a little experience with it is just the number of charitable organizations that we have in a small community like ours. Um, you kind of think that maybe there'd be a fewer number um, just because of our population. Like There's a, a, a lot of charitable organizations that um, you know, are struggling to find dollars for their annual budget, or they know of some needs, but they aren't able to meet them based right. on the dollars that they have available to them. Um, and so having a, an organization simply focused on distributing charitable funds to these organizations, um, as the donors have, have wished, um, just focusing on that and, and being available to communicate with those charitable organizations um, is the big plus in my mind. And um, it keeps that topic kind of at the forefront of our com collective community minds um, that the, there's some real good causes out here that for those to be met, we're going to need to kind of come together uh, with a good plan, a good charitable organization, and they're going to need some support from people like us. So um, people like any uh, um, of our citizens. And I think that's the other piece that the value of the foundation kind of jumps out to me is just you know, what is a donor? Well, a donor is any of us, and it's not big dollar amounts um, generally that are have made right. this difference over 20 years. It's, um, and I, I learned this from Larry Cunningham, <laughs> longtime board member, but, you know, I, I could walk in and donate $20 if I felt my heart tugging on me that day to any fund at the foundation, any scholarship at the foundation. If I just decided I wanted to help somebody else, maybe a neighbor or a friend, knowing they're going to be the beneficiaries of that, and that money was going to be invested for the long term. Mm -hmm. We've really been building something here that doesn't go away. So that's the other uh, big value piece to me is this, is this is something that lasts literally forever. It's not something that um, is an annual fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Those are needed, too. But this is something that meets a slightly different need by creating something that lasts and over time can can support on the very bottom levels something that can be counted on to be there every year. It's a financial foundation. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. It is. And, and really, we talk about our community being so giving, and that's played out year after year. Um, you mentioned the number of organizations. A lot of the things that we have in our community are only because we have volunteers and donors that are willing to support these things and and look at it and say, you know what, I can be somebody that makes right. this happen. And so. I, you know what, you just said it, Brian. The foundation serves a great purpose as the go between between the donors and volunteers in a lot of cases. Yeah. People give what they have. Sometimes it's time, or sometimes it's money. And really, when those people get together is when when the real magic can happen. So, yes. you know, our job's been bringing those groups together <clears throat> since we were started. Well, Evan, I'd like to thank you um, for your service on the board, um, service as president this year, and for joining us today and, and helping make a difference in our community. Um, we appreciate all that you do for our community, um, the support. And um, just to kind of wrap up things, of course, if you have questions about um, what's going on with the foundation, things like the scholarship application, you can always find it online, nicf.org. Um, if you get into that process and have questions, Allison Heidi, our scholarship coordinator, is always willing to be able to help um, with those questions. Um, you can give us a call, 224-3223. Um, check us out on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to um, 
talk to you about any ideas you may have for the community to make it a, a better place to live, work, and play. And just want to close the year by saying Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And, and another thank you to all of our donors who have made possible um, what the foundation does and for being willing to support our community and say, hey, we can make this a better place to live. Absolutely. Brian Johnson, Evan Gottschalk from the Fulton County Community Foundation. Thanks very much for being here. Good job in 2016. We look forward to visiting you again as we start yes. the new year in 2017. Yes. And uh, happy holidays to all you guys. Thanks, Thanks Tom. And you Scott. Too. You Thanks, too. Scott. <laughs>